Just one more thing I want to show you here. And this is something that's part of SQL Server, but is not part of the ANSI standard SQL language. And you won't see this in most other databases. And that is top. SQL Server allows you to specify a number here, top three, or you could say top three percent if you only wanted the top three percent of values. So either we're going to look at the top three values or the top 10, 50, whatever number of percent of values. And so we're going to select the top three values of city and count from TBL customer, group by city, ordered by the count. When you use this top syntax, it's very important to have an order by clause. Because after all, how do you know which are the top ones? In this case, we want the ones with the biggest numbers, not the smallest numbers. So you have to specify the order. Don't assume that the order is going to come back in any particular form. And then you can specify that you want to see just the top three values. So you know this might be used to see the top three salesmen based on sales, and so on. Here we're just going to see the top cities based on the number of customers in each city. You can also decide that you want to see the top three with ties. In other words, here we happen to know that there's more than one city with just one customer in it, and yet it cut us off at Los Angeles here. If you want to see all of the rows, even with ties for last place, just use this extra syntax, with ties, and then it won't stop at three. It'll show you the top three values and as many rows as it takes to show you all the actual rows that meet that third place value. Here's a first attempt at retrieving data from multiple tables. It's not going to give us what we want. If we want to get back the name of product and also the name of the category for that product, we need to somehow be able to draw data from TBL category because in the product table all we have is the category ID. If I simply say select product category from TBL product comma TBL category adding my category table in here to the from clause and run this what I'm going to get back is what's called a Cartesian product. In other words I'm going to get back every possible combination of every product description and every category name. And in our database, we have 11 different products. We have two categories. So if I switch to messages, you'll see 22 rows were affected. And this isn't useful information at all. Now occasionally, but very rarely, you may actually want to use a Cartesian product. If you do, the way to do it where you can make it clear is you can say here, instead of just comma, say cross join. That's the SQL syntax for that Cartesian product. Here we're making it explicit that we didn't just create some kind of an erroneous join. We actually want to get every possible combination of TBL category and TBL product. And occasionally you'll do that if you want to maybe have a where clause in here which says some value in here is greater than some value in here, something like that. In our case, this isn't what we want at all. What we want is to get the product and the category from matching items. In other words, we want to see this category that corresponds to this product. We want to relate these two tables. What we want to do is to see product and category where TBL products category ID equals TBL categories category ID. Now here you see that we've used this nomenclature of prefixing the name of the field or column with the name of the table. And the reason that that was necessary here is that if we just refer to category ID, it's really ambiguous which table it's coming from because we have a category ID in both tables. So you can prefix the name of the table here in front of the name of the field or column. This where way of joining together tables is the old way that was in use for years. And then at one point, the ANSI SQL body decided to standardize on a different notation which instead of using the WHERE clause, which really should be used just for filtering data, for applying criteria, since what we're talking about is a relationship that exists between the tables in the FROM clause, 
we can use a syntax that's contained inside the from clause. And this is join syntax. So we're going to select product from TBL product. We're going to select category from TBL category from TBL product joined to TBL category on the category ID in TBL product equaling the category ID in TBL category. This is what's called an inner join. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could type the word inner in here and it would have the same meaning. When I highlight this in the query analyzer and run it, we'll see that now we only got back 11 rows, one for each product, and we're seeing the corresponding category for each of the products. Some are shark dolls, some are shark wear. And the next example just shows you that you can use that inner join. The inner means that we're going to be only looking at products from the two tables where there's a match between category ID in each of the tables. And here's an example that shows you that even with a join, you can still have a where clause or an order by clause or both following the join. And you can also have any of the aggregate functions that are useful in select queries employed when you're using joins. I'll highlight this, and really nothing's different other than the fact that we're now restricting it to prices greater than 10, and we're ordering it by the name of the product, so the A's come first. But the join syntax is the same. Inside our from clause, the name of one table, the words inner or just join, the name of the other table, the word on, and then an expression that tells us the fields that are being matched up between the tables. If we had more than one field, we could say and here. So it might be on this field equals this field and some other field equals some other field. You can have a join based on as many fields as required. Now, sometimes your joins are going to get more complicated. You're going to have multiple tables. In this case, we're looking at the order table joined to the customer table. And we're then going to join to the employee table. And you could have six or seven different tables joined to each other. And you basically just daisy chain these join expressions one after the other. So we have this joined to this. And then really what's happening is that that entire result set of that first join is being joined to the next table. And that entire result set would be joined to a fourth table if there was a fourth table. And again, you can use where clauses, order by clauses, anything else that's legal in a select, including aggregates. And here's just another example that uses aggregates. But as far as the join syntax is concerned, everything is the same as what we've seen.